we have been put into position where we can only maintain the property and its assets rather than operate it. Straight off the top tonight, a developing story as Bahamar files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in U.S. courts today. The news sending shock waves throughout the community as many questions now arise as to the future of the mega $3.5 billion resort and its opening. However, Bahamar executives were quick today to allay those fears, saying the filing of Chapter 11 bankruptcy is the best course of action to get the hotel to open soon and to preserve further unnecessary losses. Despite this, though, it could mean mass layoffs at some point should the situation not improve. Our Clint Watson has been following this story since it broke this afternoon. He joins us live tonight. Good evening, Clint. Good evening, Charisma. Let's face it, this move wasn't far off, and many economic analysts watching the situation over the past few months saw something coming. Although many are still shocked by Chapter 11 filing a bankruptcy by Bahamar, it now confirms what perhaps we all knew. This company can no longer continue to stay closed as it literally loses millions every day while trying to sustain a payroll. We have tried our best to minimize the impact of all of this. Unfortunately, with construction still not completed and Bahamas opening continuing to be delayed, we have been put into position where we can only maintain the property and its assets rather than operate it. Senior Vice President of Government and External Affairs at Bahama, Robert Sands, explaining that repeated delays by the general contractor and millions of dollars in revenue loss has left them in a position to seek out the best avenue to take the company forward, moving the investment to completion and opening the Bahamian Riviera. That best option was to file in the U.S. courts and soon, here in the Supreme Court, Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which would allow them to continue to complete the resort. The first thing Bahama has done under this provision is to seek to get approval to continue paying employee wages and benefits as normal. But this won't last long and eventually will result in job losses should a deal not be reached. We will do our best to use the next few weeks to continue to try and reach a consensual agreement with our lender. However, if an agreement cannot be reached, we will make some extremely difficult decisions that would include workforce reductions. At this time, we can't speculate about what that means. Now, ZNS has received information that employees at Bahama were sent home on Monday after news broke. It appeared consistent with Sands' statement regarding the immediate process. As we are not presently operational, and while we deal with the Chapter 11 process, we are asking most of our employees not to physically come to work for that time being. Now, Sant says the principals and executives still believe in Bahama and will not give up on the project, doing all they can to get the $3.5 billion property opened. Now, up until news time, we were expecting to hear from Prime Minister, who, along with other senior government officials and advisors, were locked in meetings. While this report actually was on the air tonight, we received a statement just in from the Prime Minister's office. I'll read it to you in its entirety. It says, I note the statement that has been given today by Mr. Sarkis Israelian that he and the Bahama group remain committed to the pursuit of an early and definitive settlement of their outstanding differences with the lender and general contractor to the Bahama Resort. The government continues to be available to all the parties to assist in the mediation and resolution of their differences. In doing so, however, the government will not be taking any one side. Instead, the government will at all times continue to optimize its value as a mediator between the parties so as to ensure that the interests of Bahamian workers and indeed the interests of the nation as a whole are courted prior at all times. Now, the government has taken note of certain legal initiatives that have been taken by Bahama in the courts of the United States to secure creditor protection. The Attorney General is presently reviewing these initiatives and, of course, their implications in conjunction with the government's U.S. and U.K. attorneys. Until this review has been completed, it would obviously not be appropriate to make any further comment on this aspect of the matter. The Prime, the Prime Minister's statement concludes, The government remains hopeful that with the continued exertion of good faith efforts by all concerned, the Bahama Resort will not open only soon, but will fulfill its promise as an important new dimension in Bahamian and regional tourism and one that will represent a major contributor to Bahamian employment. So there you have it, Charisma. No doubt this story will continue to unfold and develop all week. But that's the latest here, live in the newsroom. Clint Watson, back to you. Thanks so much, Clint.